It is 4 p.m. Central on Wednesday. I am so nervous <laughs> about coming to you today because I'm going to come and talk to you about a super important topic, which I've been telling you I was going to talk to you about, and I'm going to announce all the things about our next free challenge, but I'm a little nervous because I really grappled with how I wanted to do this free challenge for you and with you, and I just couldn't get away from the fact that um, many of you have shared how much you grapple with sleep, and it's such a problem, and it really is, and I know that it, it does seem to affect women of a certain age a little bit more, but I also do think it's really a problem for lots of people of different ages, and male and female both. Um, I'm a little nervous because this challenge, okay, here's the good news. Let me tell you the good news, okay? The good news is this free challenge is, which starts Monday, um, it's going to cost you nothing at all. You're not going to have to buy any special food. You don't have to go to the grocery store. You don't need to hurry up and place a Trim Healthy Mama order. Nothing like that, okay? So that's the good news. So we should all participate, right? <laughs> um, now, if you've been here long enough or you've been around long enough, I bet you know one of the things that I am going to have us do. Okay, I, I bet you know one of the things. I bet some of y'all could guess it right now. But here's what I've decided to do. I, this is a free challenge, and I make it super easy to participate. It really will be, I promise it will be easy to participate. It really will be. But I'm going to really challenge us. Oh, Michelle, I am really, it's so good to see y'all ladies. I'm going to challenge us. Each day next week, I'll have three assignments. Three things that I want us to do. And you can do it. I promise you can do all three of these things. You really can. Um, and these three things are so important. So important to support our sleep. They're not going to make you go to sleep. Um, but they're going to support good sleep. And I'll share those in just a minute. I will also share them at least by tomorrow in a static post so that you can have that. And we'll pin it in the, in the feature, featured announcements at the top and all that stuff. But here's what I wanna to talk to you about first. Um, and I've shared this in some different places before. I want you to think back to when you had your, your little babies, or maybe if you've kept grandkids or anything, but I want you to think back to having babies. Hey, Sherry. And Gwen, I want you to think back to that and think about what did you do at night or in the evening, sometimes even like right after supper, what did you do in the evening to help your your six-month-old and your one-year-old and your, your 18-month-old? What did you do to help them get ready to sleep? Because like you needed them to go to sleep, right? Because mama needed them to go to sleep. So what, what kinds of things did you do? to help them go to sleep. You couldn't make them go to sleep. Lord knows we couldn't make them go to sleep, but we would do a lot of different things to help them be ready to go to sleep. And and I know like here it was, you know, warm bath, you know, read read a sit sit in mommy and dad or daddy's lap and read a book in a dim room with just a, a lamp on, not the light. We would dim the lights, turn them down, things would be quiet maybe some soft music playing, but maybe nothing. Um, the TV would not be on or anything like that. And I'm talking about when they're little, and I'm talking about when we were doing it right. There were some nights it wasn't quite like that, right? But we would we would dim the lights. We would read the books. We would sit in the lap. We would cuddle. We would do the warm bath. We would do the bottle or the nursing or the glass of milk or the snack. We would do those things because we were like, oh my goodness, I love you, child. You got to go to sleep. <laughs> and we would need to get them to calm down and, and start getting into that. And also, those things are just, those are rhythms, right? Those are just scheduled rhythms that we have to put in place to help them get ready to go to sleep. So what are you doing to help yourself get ready to go to sleep? What do you do um, 
most nights, every night after dinner, what do you do that supports yourself being ready to receive restful, good sleep? And if we're honest with ourselves, we ain't doing nothing, <laughs> okay? I want you to think about that. If we're honest with ourselves, most of us haven't given that a thought in a long time. We just go, 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 right up until it's time to collapse in the bed, or we're scrolling, 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 scrolling Facebook, Instagram, whatever, right up until it's time to like, you know, finally turn the lights out, but then we're not sleepy. It is a hot mess. Most of us are like, you know, talking, discussing, doing things, uh, maybe online or in real life, we're doing things that are not getting us ready, getting our mind and our body signaled that it's time to go to sleep. And then we're wondering, well, why can't I fall asleep? And we've gotten away from, you know what, um, most of us are really, you know, two-year-olds <laughs> in many ways. I know I don't have the best self-control when it comes to certain food, and I know I like the, you know, things the way I like them, and don't mess with my environment, and all that, you know, like, where most of us are two-year-olds. So we need to go back to some of those two-year-old type nighttime routines. Um, they're going to look a little different for us. I will share with you, though, in my Unstuck membership group last year, um, I don't remember if it was November or uh, December, but anyway, November or December last year in the membership group, we actually went through some stress-relieving type um, habits, and they were simple things like maybe lighting a candle or, or diffusing an essential oil that's calming, and we like spent a week doing that and just kind of in the evening just to get ourselves just signaling, okay, it's time to turn it down about five notches, Mama Fox, you've been going all day, time to turn it down. So we actually did some things like that, um, you know, reading, reading good books, things like that. What we're going to do here to support ourselves is actually some things throughout the day leading up to nighttime, okay? So it's up to you when you want to schedule one of these, but two of them are like a time, okay? So here we go. Y'all ready for this? Y'all can do it. I know you can do it. And here's the thing. We're going to do this for just five days. Five days ain't long. I know it's not long. But the reason I want to do these things with you next week is I want it to I want to bring awareness to your nighttime routine. And I want to cause you to really look at what your habits are during the day that may be making sleep harder than it needs to be. Um, there are, I mean, there's definitely hormonal things that are going on for sure, but often we're just kind of um, not addressing some of the simple things that would make a big, big difference to help us. At the minimum, the things I'm going to share with you will help with stress relief. Um, it will help you manage some of that a little bit better. Um, but what I have found for myself, okay, is that doing these three things I'm going to share with you, in addition to our Trim Healthy Mama way of eating, these three things um, have made such an impact on my adrenal health, my stress management, impacted my sleep. For sure, because before True Healthy Mama um, came, before it came along and came into my life, I definitely had issues with adrenal fatigue, um, and I don't want to go into that too much right now. But I did have issues with that, and, and with that and my gut, uh, sleep was not good. I, I might fall asleep, but then I would wake up and couldn't go back to sleep. Okay, or um, I have found for sure if I stay up too late. Well, then I can't go to sleep. So I want to talk to you about each of these three things we're going to do next week. You can do them. They're totally free. And um, they're really going to set you up to experience some lifestyle habits that I would really encourage you to embrace from here on out. That these things are really going to support you in all of those things you're doing with your food, um, maybe even exercise, and you're just not making the progress you want to make. Or maybe you're making some progress, but you still don't feel that great. and You're still not sleeping that great. These three things are really going to make a big difference as you continue doing them, okay? So let's tackle the first one, the big baddie, 
the big baddie. I'll be the big baddie for you because I love you too much. Offline by nine. There, that's what we're going to do. I said it. Offline by nine. Now, let's talk about what that means and what it doesn't mean, okay? My my membership mamas and my eight-week step mamas that are now unstuck, they know what I mean by this. Um, if it's five after nine and you get off, that's close enough, okay? Let's not be ridiculous. Offline by nine, the reason for that, there's at least two reasons. I might come up with a third one. There's at least two, though. I'm talking about getting off your computer, getting off your phone, um, ideally, ideally not watching TV every single night, but you know, movie night with the family or hubs or favorite show night with the family or hubs, that's, that's not really a problem, but I'm talking about like, let's not watch the news at night. Let's not do that. I don't care if it's on the, well, if you feel like you need to watch the news, let's watch that during the morning, not at night. Because that ain't going to do nobody no good at night, okay? It'll still be there in the morning. So offline by nine, um, as, as Valerie asked me one time, did you just do that because it rhymed? Yeah, pretty much. I did that because it rhymed. But the idea here is you want to get off your devices, off your computer, off your stuff, um, a couple of hours, like an hour or two or more, really, at least an hour or two before you want to be asleep. Okay, so if you really want to be asleep at, um, at by 11 p.m., then get off at least by 9, okay? If you want to be asleep by 9 p.m., then you're going to have to get offline around 7 or 8, okay? So just back it up and adjust it to whatever works for your schedule. And we, I know some of you may work different shifts, okay? So the principle is still the same, okay? I'm going to say offline by 9, but if you work like, Second shift, third shift, if your schedule is different or if you have like um, a different situation, just adjust it and just make it that you're going to get off your devices an hour or two before you want to be asleep, okay? Now, with that, let's talk about why. First of all, I've got some screens here next to me with some slides on it. I probably should show it to you, but the, the main thing that came to my attention years ago, and you can just Google it, it's a it's really interesting, but also kind of sad because so many people don't realize this. Your computer screens and your phone screens, they emit a light that really disrupts your hormones. I mean, like big time. I don't think the TV is as much of a problem, but the phones and the computers definitely do that. And it's a huge hormone disruptor, which is then going to in turn disrupt um, your body's ability to fall asleep. It's not going to think it's time to go to sleep yet. Okay, um, it's not, and it also disrupts your hormones that are involved in um, your appetite and turning it off or on correctly, and that can get broken, so to speak, um, very quickly. The other thing that we need to really realize is that when we are scrolling social media of any sort, or even when we're on a website of any sort, we are having to make constant decisions Every time we're scrolling, we're having to decide, do I want to like that comment or love it? Do I want to do a ha-ha or just a heart? Do I want to leave a comment or not? Do I want to reply or not? Do I want to save that post or not? Do I want to share that post or not? Oh, do I want to click that link or not? I mean, that's just a little bit of it, and those aren't bad things. And then, of course, you got the social media posts that get you a little riled up, and then you have a whole different set of emotions. Constant decisions, okay? At night, that's the last thing your brain needs to be dealing with when you want to go to sleep. So that has actually become, I think, even more of a reason for me to really push offline by nine with my eight-week mamas and encourage my membership mamas too to continue that habit because it is constantly causing you to have to decide Little things, little things, little things, and so your brain is like, okay, well, I guess we're, um, I guess we're going to work now. I thought we were going to go to sleep. I was sleepy around eight o'clock, but I didn't listen to, you know, I didn't listen to anything. So now I'm making decisions. It's terrible. And I, I tell you what I did last night. Um, last night I was, I was pooped. <laughs> I was so tired. And I typically get up at five a.m. and I about like 
at like 7.30, I was like, you know what, I'm kind of done. So I did sit in the den, in the recliner for a little while, and I tried to, um, I tried to look on the phone a little bit, and I tried to look at a magazine. I couldn't even look at it. And so by 8-ish, I was like, you know what, why am I fighting this? I'm tired. So I went to bed, I, I, and I was already ready for bed, um, and I read a book for about, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes. Maybe I tried to read. I read my book. I, I read at night. And I went on and turned the lights out. I went to bed. I told the family good night. And then, this is going to sound crazy, but um, I got on. Like, I know my lights were out at least by 9 p.m. Maybe, probably earlier than that, but at least by 9 p.m. And I woke up at 4.15 today, which is a little earlier than I'd like, but I felt amazing. I felt fantastic. I have not been tired all day. I have felt great. And it's because I listened to my body. That is a real problem that so many of us don't do is we don't listen to our body. And after a while, it's going to quit telling us when to go to bed. It's going to quit telling us when to stop eating. It's going to quit telling us some important things that we need to know because we're ignoring it. We're not listening. Okay. So I know that I, Look, I got three teens still at home, one at college, and of course a husband. I can't always, I can't always go to bed as early as I want. And I'm sure you're in the same boat sometimes too. I can't always do that. But I do think that if more often than not that I can listen to what my body's saying, if my body's saying, it's dark outside and you're tired and you put in a full day and if everybody else wants to stay up a little bit longer to read or do something else, then that's fine. You need to go to bed. I think that's important, okay? And I think with the offline by nine, with the social media, with the scrolling, with the computers, I think a big problem we have is that we're pushing through it, pushing through it, pushing through it, and we're spending gobs of time in the evening doing that, and we're tricking our mind and body and self into thinking that we're not sleepy, and we're postponing going to sleep, and then it's like, okay, Okay, well, you didn't want to go to sleep. Fine, we're not going to go to sleep now. You're going to lay there and you're going to think about all that stuff you just decided and read and saw, whether consciously or subconsciously, either way. So that's why we're going to do it. There's lots of science behind it as well, and it's a, it's a big problem. It's a big problem. The cool part about it is once you get into that habit of putting that phone or computer away and going to bed, or you don't even have to go to bed, but like just... Sitting in a chair reading a book or a magazine or doing some knitting or some kind of a hobby or maybe doing a puzzle or whatever it is, you're going to suddenly find you've just reclaimed an hour of your life that you had been wasting looking at Instagram, okay? And, and it sure does go by fast that way, but you're going to find suddenly, oh, I thought I didn't have time to read books. Turns out I've got 30 minutes every night where I can read. And that may not sound like a lot to some people. I don't get very far, but you know what? I read several books a month, you know, just my little time at night. So that's a big deal. And I know Benita would be all over that. She's a book reader. She's a book writer too. All right, second thing we're going to do. Okay, y'all don't leave me and don't throw tomatoes at me. The second thing we're going to do, okay, is we're going to put the caffeine down um, after 2 p.m. I didn't say away forever. I can't do that, y'all. Okay, but this is deep. I promise. You see my cup? It's probably messy. This has got decaf dandelion tea in it because it's, what, 4 p.m. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to rein in our caffeine. If you want to, um, if you want to enjoy some caffeine, if you're, if you're someone who enjoys coffee or tea that's caffeinated or green tea or matcha, matcha's got some caffeine in it. Not a lot, not a lot, but we're going to pull that back to not after 2 p.m. Okay. Now, again, adjust that, adjust that if you need to. I'm just looking at like a couple of hours, you know, an hour or two or so after lunch, we probably need to cut that off. So whenever your lunch is, and you know, if you work a different shift, you adjust that, okay? But we're gonna pull it back so that we're not overstimulating ourselves. This one shocked me when some years ago, as a Trim Healthy Mama, certainly not before, but this one shocked me when I finally decided to switch to decaf coffee in the afternoon. 
most of the time. I mean, I do, I don't always, I don't always do that, but most of the time I make a pot of decaf coffee in the afternoon um, right after lunch. And I was just really prepared for my productivity to go down and to be slumping, have that afternoon slump and all that. Oh my goodness gracious, y'all. I don't ever have an afternoon slump. I used to. I used to big time. Like when I taught school, when I taught third grade, you better know I had a coffee pot in my classroom. And it was for that sole reason right there. Because I would make coffee so I could get through that slump. And that was back when I was like, you know, a spring chicken, okay? So I don't have a slump anymore. And that, that a big part of that came when I pulled the caffeine back. I enjoy some in the morning for sure. I, I certainly do. But I cut it off, okay? And that, just getting rid of the afternoon slump, that's a bonus, mamas. Getting rid of that, that is a bonus. And it's just amazing. Um, I mean, I'm a pretty high energy person. But believe me, I had a hard afternoon slump for decades. Decades. Truly, truly, truly. So cutting that back. And I love coffee. So having the decaf, having a good, get yourself a good decaf that you enjoy to take the place. Um, that has been so great. So we're going to cut that caffeine off, uh, no caffeine after 2 p.m., okay? Now, I personally, this is me, I don't personally count chocolate in that, like cocoa. I don't. <laughs> I make up my own little rules, I guess. But I don't personally count chocolate in that because I just don't need that kind of negativity. But, you know, if you're super sensitive, you probably already are doing that. I know some are super sensitive to caffeine and can't even really have, um, like, chocolate or cocoa later so but if that's you you already know that um but for me i don't count it that way okay so if you want some chocolate at four it's okay it's totally fine with me but we're going to cut off the caffeine drinks and stuff like that at 2 p.m okay that's number two number two um and what that's going to do for us is i think it will help with afternoon slump if you keep doing it but also um i want you hydrating um that's not really part of the challenge it's not to hydrate but in turn, if you're not doing your caffeine beverages, you're hopefully going to be drinking things that are going to be hydrating you well, and that's going to really help with sleep. Dehydration, um, I know sometimes our bodies can confuse de being dehydrated with hunger, but it can also get mixed up with being dehydrated can also cause you to not sleep well. But I know you don't want to be drinking and guzzling at night, right? We don't want to drink, um, you know, four cups of of water at night right before we go to bed so starting around 2 p.m let's make sure we're hydrating well in the afternoon early evening and that will give us a really good start on our nighttime sleep as well as getting rid of that afternoon slump all right number three thing we're going to do so we're going to do all three of these each day five days next week but you can do this all right the third one is 20 minutes outside doing whatever you want to do it does not have to be a walk it could certainly be a walk. It could be sitting on your front porch for 20 minutes. It could be sitting on your back deck for 20 minutes. It could be raking leaves, leaf blowing. You can make it as active or inactive as you want. I just want you outside during the day for at least 20 minutes, okay? And what that's going to do for you is, first of all, stress reliever, big time. Walking away from, if you work from home, walking away from that work for 20 minutes and taking a break and a breather, that's a big deal. Um, just getting up and doing something different if you've been sitting a lot, that's a big deal too. I would encourage you to do a walk if you can, but if you can't or don't want to, that's okay too. But 20 minutes outside. But what that does is when that, when that sunlight, when that light hits our eyeballs, it literally starts telling our brain, Oh, it is daytime. I need to be awake in the daytime. And at night, when the, when it's not daytime, I need to go to sleep. So it's kind of resetting that internal clock that we have really abused and ignored. Okay. You know, we love, we love our modern lights. We don't want to get rid of electricity. We don't get, want to get rid of our lights. We don't. But unfortunately, what it's done is it tricks our body, it tricks us, it tricks us into thinking, oh, well, I'm just going to turn the lights on and I can get lots more work done. Now that the kids are in bed and it's eight o'clock, I can get a lot of work done. Well, that's true. But so many times of doing that over and over again, you're really telling your body, eh, you don't know what you're talking about. I can keep going and I'll just sleep some other time. 
but then here we are having trouble sleeping and not knowing why we can't go to sleep and we can't stay asleep. We're kind of we're kind of ignoring the signals that are built in and we're, we're causing ourselves to have a lot of trouble sleeping. So we're going to go outside for 20 minutes. I cannot wait to see. This is the one I'm excited about. This is the one you're going to show us. You're going to show us what you do with that 20 minute time. Okay. Um, and again, it can be sitting on the deck. It can be sitting in the drive. I used to sit at the end of the driveway so my kids could play in the driveway and not run in the street. Um, it can be that. It can be whatever you want it to be, okay? So, offline by 9, no caffeine after 2 p.m., 20 minutes outside each day doing whatever you want to do, but it needs to be during the day. Now, I know there's been seasons here at Casa Fox where, um, you know, we do nighttime walks sometimes, like maybe after supper. Feel free to do that. Do, do a nighttime after dinner walk after supper. That's great. But this 20 minutes outside needs to be during the daylight, during the daytime, so that your so that sunlight's hitting your eyeballs. There are receptors in your eyeballs. Isn't that cool? There's receptors in there that receive that light and start signaling to your brain. It's daytime, time to be awake. And, and then some hours later, okay, it's nighttime, time to go to sleep. Isn't that cool? It's so fascinating. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to start at Monday. Y'all can do this. And I'm going to be doing it with you. My membership mamas, they're going to be doing it with us, I know. In my membership group, we have, now I think this is going to be backwards. I wish this wasn't backwards for y'all, but can y'all see that? It says sleep support habit tracker. And that's in my um, Unstep membership group. And we have, every week, we have um, a different habit related to sleep support. And the first three are the ones I just shared with you, okay? That's the first three. And so next week, my membership mamas will be um, focused on no caffeine after 2 p.m., but I'm going to encourage them to also do those other two. We're going to do all three, five days next week. We can do it. It's going to make a big difference. And what this is going to do for you is just to kind of give you a taste of some of those lifestyle habits that are really key for supporting all those things that you do already with your food and maybe even with supplements and different things like that. You can take lots of supplements, okay? And there's some great ones out there. You can take all kinds of supplements and, you know, all the things, but these lifestyle habits like that, and of course, we could talk about other lifestyle habits that would be supportive like hydration, um, exercise movement, but these lifestyle habits they're there to support the food and the supplements and all the things that you're already doing so that they work better and, and so that you're really attacking all that stuff that's keeping you from sleeping from different angles, okay? So we want to support ourselves. We want to get our mind and our body and our soul and spirit ready to go to sleep. And we can't make ourselves go to sleep, but we can do a whole lot to get ourselves ready for a restful night um, and so I hope these will help you. I will share some more information with you over the next week or two. That's just, I've got, like I said, I've got these slides here that are just, it's crazy some of the things that, um, that sleep is involved in that we don't think about, okay? It's not just a matter of, oh, I didn't get enough sleep. I'm going to be tired the next day. Oh, it's so much more than that. It's so much more than that. So I'll share more with you later. I know this went long. I'm looking forward to this challenge. I, For those of y'all who have been here a while, I was looking through the guides because I just knew surely we've done, surely we've done a sleep challenge before, a sleep support challenge. I couldn't find one. Y'all, have we never done a sleep support challenge in here? Like, I can't believe that because it's kind of a big deal for me. It's kind of one of my hot topics I like to talk about. That and, you know, anti-inflammatory and stuff like that. But I don't know if we have. I know we have never done one that was this, like, um, you know, three things to do. But I just really feel very strongly about these three things and how impactful they are at no cost. These are free. These are things that are free that we need to be doing, okay? So I'm looking forward to this. If you have any mama friends that struggle with sleep or that are interested in Trim Healthy Mama too, invite them on in because anybody can do these things. Even if they're, even if your mama friend isn't on plan, she can do this stuff and she can get introduced to 
kind of some of the things that we do here. It's not just food, it's lifestyle habits too. They work together and support one another. Okay, mamas, I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday and be looking for more information about our challenge and how that's going to work and how, and there's no sign up. You know, there's never a sign up for the free challenges. There's no sign up. You just show up and I will have, um, I will have all of this information that you need to know in a post um, tomorrow and I'll have it pinned and then that way you'll know exactly what you need to do to show to participate. All right, bye-bye ladies.